the scientist measures the percentage of fat in 13 random samples. Now, the scientist wants to verify the assumption of normality before performing any hypothesis testing. Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are going to learn one of the most important topics from the statistics, Lean Six Sigma, as well as from the graphical tools. Today's topic is normality test. We are going to understand this concept with the help of practical example, what is the detailed interpretation of it and what is the practical significance of it. So let's begin. Let's start with the meaning of this normality test. What is this normality? Let's understand that in detail first. The normality indicates that whether your data follows a normal distribution or not. And why it is important? Because many statistical procedure, many statistical tools Assume that the data follows a normal distribution. And without checking this assumption of normality, if you use that particular statistical tool or statistical procedure, we may lead into incorrect analysis of the data. That's why it's very important to check this assumption for the normality. To verify this assumption with the data, we are going to use normality test. Normal distribution is one of the most important statistical distribution that we can see into the real life. But many times we come across the situations where our data is not following the normal distribution. In that case, we must conduct this normality test. There are three tests by which we can check whether our data is following the normal distribution or not. The first test for the normality is Anderson-Darling test. This test has good power and we are using this test very commonly. This test is especially effective at detecting the departures from normality in the high and low values of a distribution. So depending on this value of Anderson Darling, we can say whether our data is following the normal distribution or not. There is another test which is called as a Ryan Jainer. This is similar to the Shapiro Wilk test. We can also call this as a RJ test. This test is also having the good power, but it is based on the correlation between the sample data and the data one would expect from a normal distribution. The third test for the normality is Kolmogorov Smirnov. This is also called as case test. This is a popular test of normality, but the problem with this test is it is having less power compared to the other test that we had seen. Now, once we understand what is normality and what are the various tests for the normality, let's take a practical example to understand that how we can use the Microsoft Excel as well as Minitab in addition to the Sigma Excel to check whether our data is following the normal distribution or not. A scientist for a company that manufactures processed foods wants to assess the percentage of fat in the company's bottle sauce. The advertised percentage is 15%. The scientist measures the percentage of fat in 13 random samples. Now, the scientist wants to verify the assumption of normality before performing any hypothesis testing. We are going to understand how we can perform this normality test in Minitab as well as Sigma Excel. Let's start with the Minitab first. This is the data for fat contained for 13 random samples. Now let's see whether our data is following the normal distribution or not. The tool that we are going to use here is the normality test. Let's do that. Please follow the procedure. Go to the stat. After that, we need to select this basic statistics option. And in that, we need to go to the normality test. We can also see what is a message coming there. Determine whether your data follow a normal distribution. Use when you have continuous measurements such as length or weight. Click on this normality test. After that, we can see there is a normality test window will be open. Here, we need to select what is our variable. Our variable here is a fat content. So we can select that fat content as a variable. Once we select this variable, keep the default selection of percentile lines as none or we can also select at particular Y values or at the data values. After that, we can see there are three tests for normality. Anderson-Darling test, Ryan Joyner test and Kolmogorov Smirnov test. These are also called as AD test, RJ test and KS test. Now click on this Anderson-Darling. We can also add the title here like Normality test for fat content. Once we add the title, click OK. 
Here, we will be getting the normality test plot or the normal probability plot for fat content. In this example, we can see the Anderson Darling AD value is coming as 0.135 and related to this AD, the P value is 0 0.970. Here, before to understand the interpretation, you must know what are the hypotheses in normality test. There are two types of hypothesis and here we can see the null hypothesis is H0 colon the data follows a normal distribution. Whereas the alternative hypothesis is H1 colon the data does not follow a normal distribution. Statistically, when the p-value is low, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Whereas when the p-value is high, then we are going with the alternative hypothesis. This is an important interpretation related to p-value. Please remember this. To understand this in detail, you must learn the hypothesis test. In this case, there is another value that is called as alpha or significance level. The default value for the significance level is 0 0.05. In any case, if you are having the p-value less than 0 0.05, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. In this example, as the p-value is 0.97, we can say our data follows a normal distribution. Now let's see what are the results that we are getting for other two tests. Press the Ctrl E. And now instead of Anderson Darling test, please select RJ test. Click OK. So here again we can say we are getting the p value more than 0.1. Again we can say the data is following the normal distribution. Let's perform the third test which is case test. Click on this case and then select this OK. Here again we are getting the p value more than 0.15. This is again indicating that our data is following the normal distribution. Here all the three tests are giving the accurate results but Anderson Darling test is having more power compared to the third test which is KS test and that's why this is more popularly used. Now let's understand how we can perform this normality test into the Sigma Excel. This is the data for same fat content that we have copied from the minute app. Now, there are multiple ways to calculate this normality test. Let's use an graphical tools here. For that purpose, we need to go to the graphical tools and select this option of histogram and descriptive statistics. If you click on that, then it is asking for the selection of data. Select this use entire data table option. Click next. After that, we need to select this numerical data variable as fat content. We can see here. There is an option for normal curve as well as same x and y axis. Also, we can see here the confidence level is 95%. That means the alpha here is 5% which is equal to 0 0.05. So click here as a OK. And after that, we will be getting the histogram along with descriptive statistic. That also indicates the Anderson Darling value. If you look at this Anderson Darling normality test, the AD value is coming as 0 0.134610 and the corresponding p-value is 0.97. This is similar to the p-value that we have got into the minute app. If you want to plot the normal probability plot for the same data, we can also plot that by using the normal probability plot option. Please go to the graphical plot and select here as an option for normal probability plot. Click on that. Here we can see the entire data table. Click next. Select this numeric data variable as fat content and click OK. So we will be getting the normal probability plot for the fat content as well. If you look at this line and all the data points, all these data points are very close to this straight line. This is also indicating that our data is following the normal distribution. This is all about normality and normality test. I am sure that with the help of this practical example, you must have the complete clarity about this topic. Let's learn another important topic into the next video. At the end of this video, if you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijayasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing. If you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel.
By joining this YouTube channel, you are not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career goal. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.